side of that corner there on one. Oh, 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 was I driving my truck? No, that's you were your truck. Well, then you better be afraid. <laughs> Chapter 22. Now, uh, last week we were with the Levites. The week before we were with the Cities of Refuge. Uh, Levites, basically, good story good, good uh, story and picture of you. God has a refuge for you. You want to uh, get with the Lord. Uh, it's, it's good to be in fellowship with the Lord. And you'll notice even at the end, it makes sure you understand. It never mentioned God the whole time. It, like, like Joshua was in charge. And then at the very end, the last three verses, it's all about God. God gives and God gives and God gives and God gives. And, you know, everybody here can actually uh, say that if God didn't give you anything else, you still got a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he, you know, when we got saved, he only had to give you, you himself. That's all he had ever had to give. We've been doing pretty well. And uh, sometimes you have to realize that even, even as such, God spoils us. And we're spoiled today. And, uh, uh, I mean, come on, people. <laughs> Look at us. We're dressed well. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I went over my life one day, and I sit there, and I said, you know, I, I've been all around the world. I've been everywhere, around the world, in Asia, in the Middle East. I've been uh, all, all over the place, and uh, I've traveled and gone vacationing and uh, wherever, in this place and that place. I've seen mountains that are beautiful. I've seen other oceans. I've seen uh, paradise places that look like paradise. I drove a tank 500 miles uh, in the Middle East and, uh, you know, and commanded more tanks. I, uh, I've, I've shot, mil I've been in wars and, and I look at it and I look back and I say, man, God made me, get, God did a lot for me. He gave me, a, he let me see a lot of things and I got to live through it, you know, and I've seen, I've seen things. And, and if you go by your life and you start to look at it, we kind of take it for granted. You know, uh, the things that we've done and things that we've gotten to see and in our lifetimes. You know, you've probably seen more than your parents did. You probably, uh, your grandparents, they were all local people that stayed local. I mean, I know people that, I know people that barely ever left the town. Yeah. You know, and here we are, we've been around everywhere. You know, I mean, Larry's been in the Navy and he's been in, he's been in ports all over the, all over the world. Riding in, he's been on the ocean and went across the ocean. Bob has been an airplane pilot on a commercial flights. He's flown into Israel. He's flown. He's flown into places all over. You know, uh, uh, you know. If God were to stop now, we still have no right to be upset. Yeah, amen. Because he really has. He's been really good to us. He's been like conquerors, and and uh, you know, he's treated us incredibly. A lot of people are like, oh, man, I'll be seeing everything when I get the money. And let me tell you something, most of us have seen it all now. I thank the Lord we got the best. Amen. So uh, here we start in 20, and, and now he's going to deal with, okay, now, now we're, we're pretty much solid. We're pretty much know what we're doing. The battle plan has already been uh, spent out. Now we're just trying to get everything together, uh, keep what's ours, move people out of the area, and, uh, and now... He's going to, Joshua's going to make his decision on uh, calling the battle. He's actually calling the battle now. And we'll see how people act during this. And the Bible says in chapter 22, Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe Manasseh, and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren as he promised them. Therefore now return ye and get you unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side, Jordan. But take diligent he to do the commandment and the law which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you to love the Lord your God 
and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went unto their tents. Our Father, bless thy word tonight. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it's, uh, he's, he looks at those guys and he says, hey, look, you guys went over. Remember when they wanted what was on the other side of Jordan? The grass was good there. They liked it. They're going to go there. They just don't want to. Not everybody wants to go further. Uh, some people just get saved and they don't do anything. I, I, uh, you know, they, they, just sit, they just sit at home. And uh, they're still children of God. You have to understand something, people. There's children of God. There's sons of God. Okay? Something we didn't know. Most people don't even preach it. I've never heard it preached before until I read about it. In Romans chapter 8, it says there's children of God. There's sons of God. How do you know? Well, when it says, uh, it says to them that received... To them gave he power to become. He didn't say they were. He said to become. And he says there's a difference between the children of God and the sons of God. Sons of God are led by the Spirit. Where the children of God, they're just, it's a proper room. You know, they're, and, and they're, they're saved kids, but you got to understand something. Sons serve. Sons, they serve. Children, they do what children do. Okay, and you have to realize this. There is maturity in Christianity. Somebody who just gets saved, they'd be 70 years old, they just got saved, they're still a babe in Christ. Spiritually, they're a babe. Okay? It's up to, uh, now it's up to God's doctrines and his walls and what he would call his church to do what? Get these people prepared to live in life. Okay? I mean, let's face it. Living the Christian life is, an, is, uh, is a great life. But it's a hard life. It's a very hard life. It's easy to live like a lost man and, and be a drunk or whatever. It, it's, it's hard to live a Christian life and trying to hang on. And it is. You see it yourself. You get up on a day, and what happens? My back hurts, my arm hurts, something like that. I don't want to go to church. Why? I'm depressed. You don't realize it's, it's your flesh, and it's just telling you what to do. Well, let me tell you something. I have learned that, I have learned this go anyway. And the reason why is because God's got something for you. And it's because you're depressed. Don't you think he knew about it way beforehand? He really does get I've noticed people who, who usually are depressed, and they'll come in and fight it. They'll leave here. Usually a lot of times with a smile on their face saying, God, God answered me. I see this in my life. And I'm, not, I'm going off topic because I'm only going to do 20 of these verses. It's just too long to do the whole thing. Go off topic a little, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys have ever did this. God speaks to us through the scriptures, but did you ever have one scripture or something where God just turned around and targeted, it's like a bell went off, and you know you heard God's voice from either me or somebody in your life has spoken, and you're like, was that him or was that God? A lot of times I can see it inside the church house because the reason why is because all of a sudden you'll be looking and you'll like, like somebody just spoke to me, and I don't even know who it is, but they did. And, uh, and you know it's through the scripture, and then you start looking at it, and you're going, yeah, that's part of my life. And you'll notice they're not every week. It doesn't happen like that. You should cherish those moments, because you heard the voice of God. That's how I look at it, and I say, I heard the voice of God. And, uh, and it sounded like... There's been times where it sounded like her voice. A few times it sounded like Larry's voice, but it, it sounds like their voice. Why? Because God uses people. God is a spirit. Okay? A spirit has to have a host. That's why God uses people. Can you understand that? That's why he has preachers. That's why he has these things. And that's why he leads you. Those who are led by the spirit, well, they're the sons of God. Tonight, you guys are sons of God. There's nobody else even trying to do anything for God. There's nobody else that's even listening to God's voice anymore. You can see, most places are only going down to one little service in the afternoon on Sunday. That's it. They can't do it anymore. It's too hard. Nobody wants to do anything. And you're finding that out. Let's go further because that's what kind of people you're going to be dealing with today. 
It's Laodicea, Laodicea Christianity, chapter 3 of Revelation. Well, let's go on. He says, he said in chapter uh, 22 in the first and second verses and, th and third verses all the way up to six, he, they, he was saying to him, he said in verse number two, talking to these two tribes and a half tribe, you obeyed my voice. You listened to, did what the Lord commanded, you obeyed my voice. Now, I got to say this. They only sent 40,000 men. They were supposed to send a lot more, if you remember. They only sent like 40,000 men. But did you ever notice that God doesn't pick up on your bad stuff? He doesn't, he doesn't turn around and go, well, you, 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 you cheated me for the 20. He does with the best he's got. If you're, whatever you'll offer him, he'll make best of what you have. I've noticed that. Um, now, the big thing here is he says, you've obeyed me. Now, God, God said to something about Saul. He said the, Saul went and did the sacrifice. Remember, he hurried it. Impatience, he did the sacrifice. And uh, one thing that the, the Lord says to him through Samuel, he says, the Lord would rather have obedience than sacrifice. See, if you were listening, you wouldn't have to do a sacrifice. Okay? But the big thing is for him to say obedience is over sacrifice. Well, that shows you right there that it's by faith and faith alone. And the reason why is because if he would rather have obedience over sacrifice, None of you have ever been obedient. You've always need, you would have needed a sacrifice. But God would rather have you obedient than do a sacrifice. It just shows you how God is. Amen. Amen. So God would rather have obedience and sacrifice. And he says in verse 3, You have not left your brethren in these many days unto this day, but you've kept the charge. You've charged in of the commandment of the Lord your God. Uh, verse number four, and now the Lord your God hath given you given rest unto your brethren. And now look at that last that the next four left four words. As he promised them. There's the only guy that's a real promise keeper. All that other stuff was a bunch of phonies coming up with a bunch of phony organizations because they always think that, oh, we're gonna get together and we're gonna be able to do things. And they made something called promise keeper. And that was the biggest joke I ever seen. It was more idolatry than anything else. And we don't need a promise. Let me tell you something. What happens when you fail? And what kind of promises are you making? Worldly promises or spiritual promises? Most of the time when people get together, it's worldly promises. And it's like we're going to go take over the country again. And pop, it's going to be political. I want you to understand something. God don't need you to be political. He needs you to be spiritual. Amen? And he does. <coughs> Amen. So, um, he says, I'm going to give you rest. You know, God gives you. He gives you a place of rest. Have you ever noticed that? He gives you a place of rest. Once you got saved, he gave you a place to rest in. Where is it? Well, you have one here. Nobody's going to harm you in here. He's got all kinds of places. Your house actually becomes a place of rest because now rest comes into your house. It's not walking the walls all the time. You don't have to be in arguments all the time. You know, most of the time, you can just drop them because they're silly anyway most of the time. Amen. So, uh, but he, he wants to give you a rest. Uh, go over to Ephesians chapter 2. We'll be going over Ephesians chapter 2 on Sunday. And in Ephesians 2, look at this, um, look at uh, verse number, verse number, we'll start verse number 1. He says, and you hath he quickened who were dead. He quickened you, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, You're, this, there's a spirit that's working in somebody that's, that's not obedient. Here we got people here that said, what? They're obedient here. So I've given them rest, a place of rest, because they were obedient. In time past, they, they, they walked in the world, but now they walked with Jesus in Joshua. And guess what? Now it's time to give them rest as he had promised them. You ever notice that everything God promises comes true? Yeah. <laughs> everything you promise uh, maybe, maybe not, you know. But anything God promises, it's coming true. And you know something? It always comes true right on the dot, I've noticed. You know, uh, I'll, I'll just give you a, 
a thing. There is one book that they that archaeologists will use all more than any other book as far as in, in Israel. You know what book it's called? It's called the Bible. I was just reading a guy who was uh, one of the, uh, a group that was the main archaeologist, not even believers. They weren't even believers. And you know what they said? They said the King James Bible was 100% correct in everything they went and looked at. I was just I was astounded that they didn't even believe, and they did it. So uh, let's go on with verse number four. He says, therefore now return ye and get you unto your tents and unto your land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side, Jordan. But, always that changeover, but take heed, take heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had charged you. Okay, he says he had charged you to do these things. Okay, what God gave you, he's saying, what I gave you, I want you to do something now with it. And he charged them. You remember the charges? Okay, go to Thessalonians chapter 5. First. He'll give you one. It says to walk within the Lord, to, to, to love the Lord, to walk in His ways, to keep His commandments, to cleave, to, to serve with your heart. What are these things? Look at uh, verse number 16. What was He going to do? Rejoice. rejoice. Evermore. You notice how it says rejoice. Evermore. How many of you rejoice? Amen. How many rejoice? I mean, I, I tell you right now, why not? I go outside your house one day and just sing. I do it. I like doing it. I mean, it makes my neighbor look over, but it's pretty cool. You know? <laughs> I'll just go outside, just start singing and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I think God's been really good to me, and sometimes I want to tell people about it. Amen. Is there a funny uh, look on his face? Huh? Is there a funny look on his face? No, nah, he just looked at me. Oh. <laughs> I sang over to him. <laughs> well, I, when I go out and street preach once in a while, I'll just tell you how good God is. I'll just go out there, and I used to, I used to go out there, and I used to just shout out and tell people how great he is. I mean, why shouldn't we brag on him? You brag about everything else. Why you brag on him? That's right. Amen. So, but he turns around. He's saying, "Look, go back to Joshua." And he says, "Look, uh, here's what I, there's a to do here. Take diligent heed to do. Okay, you need to do something." You got it now. You, you got saved. Now what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Okay, that's the thing. You got saved. What are you going to do with it? Okay? Uh, God wants you to redeem the time. He wants you to grab hold of eternal life. He wants you to do something with it. You know, it doesn't even matter your age. I see people 70, 70 years old at the end of their 70s, and, and there's nothing. They thought there was nothing left. Oh, God can't use me now. They led more people to Christ when they were 78 years old and 80. Yeah. Than she did when she was a young girl. Right. She came to me. She said, I, I barely led anybody in my lifetime to Christ. I don't even know if I did. She goes, well, how do I? She sat there, got taught. 200, 300 people probably by the end of her life. Yeah, amen. Everything she did, all those other years meant nothing to her compared to two of the 300 people. Mm -hmm. Passed out 200 tracks a week. I got, I got cases. I got cases now. You know how many cases? I, I was barely able to keep one case at a time. 200 a week. Do you know what God's doing? He's counting. God's a bookkeeper. And he's going, wow, look at this. 50 years as a Christian and 45 of them nothing. Barely anything. Just went to church. Look at these last five. Man, that person's going to be a different person when they get to heaven. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he says, I got some things for you. What's that? I want you to, he gives, them, he gives them all together five things. Watch. To love the Lord your God. Now, that's not hard. I think it is, but it isn't. He says, I'm going to charge you. Love the Lord your God. Do what? Walk in his ways. He says, keep his commandments, cleave unto him, stay close to him, even in bad times, and do what? To serve. Amen. Now watch what he says, to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. He's just showing him something that 
they were supposed to be doing. Deuteronomy 6. And look at the fourth verse. They were supposed to say this three times a day. Now watch what it says. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's your body, your, your, your body, soul, and spirit. That's everything. Your heart is your body, your soul is your soul, and your strength and your might, that's your spirit. You're going in your spirit. It's God wanted you to do. Now, they were supposed to say, and it, this is, people bring this up, it's called the Shema. If anybody brings that up to you, that's what it is. It's right there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, is the Shema. S-H-E-M-A, I guess, I don't know. But uh, that's what he's talking about. They were supposed to say it three times a day. Okay? Now, go back to Joshua 22, and what is it? What is that last thing? Cleave the Lord, and to do what? To serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. God knew what he was doing. If you were doing what he told you back in Deuteronomy chapter 6, they would have been like, oh yeah, that's right, we're doing that every day. Amen. So what Joshua would do right afterwards and explains to them, he does what he should do. He blessed them. Go with God when they walk out. Uh, blessing somebody. Hey, look, you ever see here, here when somebody sneezes, you say, people say, bless you, bless you, right? Okay, who's blessing them? Do you say God? Because i got to tell you something. You know, 10 years ago, I used to always hear the Lord bless you, God bless you, or something like that. Usually when I'm sitting at a place, I never hear it anymore. You know what I hear? Bless you. Just so you know, when somebody says bless you, that means you bless you. You bless them. Because you didn't put God in there. And that is the proper verb. Verbiage is you bless. So it makes you think, what's that? Why don't you say God bless you? Amen. Start saying the name. Why? Because the world is getting you attuned and trained not to. Mm -hmm. Don't be of it. Just something to think about. Something practical. So Joshua blessed them and he sent them away. And they went unto their tents. Okay, just went to back to their place. It wasn't talking about going to the hotel room or nothing. Uh, verse number seven. Now, to the one half tribe, to the one half tribe, uh, Moses had given possession of Bashan. But unto the other half thereof gave Joshua among their brethren on the other side, Jordan, westward. And when Joshua sent them away, also unto their tents, then he blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver, and with gold, and with brass, and with iron, and, and very much raiment. you got a lot of clothes. Divide the spoil of your enemies uh, with your brethren. So, so I mean, i got to tell you, man, right there, God, God's turning around. He says, hey, look, here's some riches. He's sharing it. You know, if you were to, if, look, I, I've been in war. We found $650 million in Iraq behind walls that... With, with uh, that, that Saddam and his family had at the palace, $650 million in cash was there. You know how much we got? None. None. <laughs> I got to tell you, I have no idea where that money went. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you this, those soldiers got that money. You see, this is the difference with leadership. You know, when you get saved and you're in the, you're after the, after it's all over, you know what the Lord says? We're joint heirs. What's that mean? We're brethren. I mean, could you imagine the Lord saying, we're brethren? What's that? You're, I'm your brother. I'm that. He, you're dragging him. I feel like I'm dragging him down. You know? But he's like, yeah, I love y'all. We're all, we're all in this together. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You're doing all the work. I'm doing nothing. And yet I'm getting all this. This is great. I feel like a baby in a high chair screaming my head off and everybody's giving me everything. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but there's but with sometimes with with blessings like that, they, they can be a cursing. Yeah. Amen. They can be a cursing. Go to Revelation chapter three.
Now, Revelation 2 and 3 are both about church ages. They're, they're local churches, but they're also ages, a picture of church ages, okay? And, and uh, you're in here. Just so you know, the church we're in, it's in here, okay? It's, and it's in chapter 3, and uh, I'm going to explain our church, and this is what has happened. Look at verse, we're going to start in chapter 3 and looking down at verse number 14. This is the church age you're in. Uh, I didn't say it's you. I said if you take the whole church as one body, which we are today, this is the church you're in. This is how it operates. Uh, it says, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, the messenger, the preacher, or whoever, he said, right. These things saith the amen, that's Jesus, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. We actually work. Our church works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. I'd rather have you not do anything or be on fire. Uh, but he says, you're, you're, so then, because you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You're on, you're all. You're not even on or off. You're halfway. You, you play the game halfway. You're not in it. He says, you're neither hot, hot cold, nor hot. He says, I, I, I will spoo thee out of, my, out of my mouth. I feel like throwing up. Why is that? Because thou sayest. You got, you know, we, we, as a church, we got a problem with our mouth, obviously. Thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. We're a bunch of braggers. And knowest not that thou art, you don't even realize, God says, that spiritually, you know what you are? You're wretched and you're miserable and you're poor and blind and naked. And he says, I counsel thee to buy of me what? Gold tried in a fire that thou mayest be rich and white and, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes. We want you to see rightly. See the world as it is with thyself, that thou mayest see. You come in here and, and, and you, you get a preacher up here. And you know what, you know what happens? You got a preacher in here who reads this book. And when something happens out there and it starts to come in here, your preacher should be getting up and saying, that's a lie! And telling you what the truth is. You may not want to listen to it, but he should be telling you. What is this stuff? Get the masks off. It's not real. That was the first thing some preachers did say. Very few. But they should have been saying that. Our people should be safe. We have the Lord. Yeah. Amen? What do you think? Now think about this. Now think if the world were saying that the spreaders were in the churches. Did you notice that? The spreaders are in the churches. They're, they're, they're spreading events or whatever, you know, like that. You think, the, now, a real true church with God's kids in it, you think that God's going to allow that to happen? No. And it didn't. Isn't that something? It didn't happen, and they're just a bunch of people with big mouths just talking. Amen. Sometimes their mouths have to be stopped. Sometimes you just got to turn around to somebody who's a, who's a big mouth liberal and just say, shut up! I've had enough of you. Shut your mouth. It works. Believe me, I've done it. <laughs> well, you got to understand something about those people. They're a bunch of wimps. Yes, that's for sure. Liberals are wimps, people. They don't yeah. fight themselves. They fight dirty. Yeah. You know? The only thing they listen to is a punch in the mouth because they're a bunch of wise guys. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, but violence is the only way with them. That's why when the Lord comes back, he ain't asking them no questions. He ain't having a court case, people. Oh, well, oh, let, me get the pro let me get my guy and we'll sue them. That ain't going to happen. You know what the Lord's going to do? He's going to clean the house. You know what them liberals are going to be? They're going to be the blood on his bridle. Yeah. He's had enough. Yeah. He's had enough of this evilness that they are. They're evil people. He even tells them in Isaiah, though, don't call them no more liberal. They're evil. Yeah, right. They're just evil people. I don't even know why we even... Communicate well. I can't. I don't communicate. If they, once they start talking, uh, I gotta get out of here. Why? I don't want to listen to you. You are totally insane. They stole an election, and the news has been telling them, "No, there's no stolen election." Oh, there's no stolen election. What are you insane? You're insane. Yeah. You have to be insane. If you didn't see all that stuff, you're insane. Either you're insane, or you're acting that you're acting insane. One of the two. But still, it's the same thing. I don't want to talk to you. I don't talk to mor morons. I used to say that. Hey, look, you can't fix stupid. 
Haven't you noticed that? Hey, you own a business. Can you fix stupid? No, you can't fix stupid. Some guy who's been living here for 20 years and can't find Main Street. I mean, come on. The delivery driver can't find Main Street. He's just too, he's been here his whole life. He's stupid. You ain't going to fix that. <laughs> it's sad. Amen, it is. It's a sad, sad day. You can't even find good workers. Why? Because they, they're all, I swear they're all stupid or something. <laughs> I hate saying it, but it's true. I listen. I sit there and I listen. I'm like, but they didn't just say that, did they? <laughs> We're living in some strange place, man, I feel like. But if you look at this Bible, you'll know every time you're like, oh, that's a lie. You'll be sitting there knowing uh, everybody's lying. Do you know what this Bible says? It says men of high degree are a lie. What's that tell you? Every one of them rich people out there that's telling you to do something, they're all lying. Why? Because the Bible says so. Why listen to them? You know, turn your television on. Don't watch that new stuff. Why? Because they're just going to lie to you. They're billionaires. They own everything. They're, they're going to tell you exactly, uh, you're, they're going to tell you exactly what's going to make them money and their friends. So Joshua, he blessed them. He gave that then God, he turns around and blesses them again, gives them silver and gold. And God wants to bless us, but he wants it used rightly, not wrongly. Verse number nine, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned. They departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh. Remember, that's where the tabernacle is, which is in the land of Canaan, to go unto the country of Gilead to the land of their possession whereof they were possessed uh, where they were possessed according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses here we go and when they came in unto the borders of Jordan that are in the land of uh, Canaan the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the, and the half tribe of Manasseh uh, built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see uh, to. Now, it's first time they go back, what happens? Oh, let's, get, let's do something stupid. And they go and build an altar. God says, hey, look, when we get into the land, there's only going to be uh, one altar, and that's going to be my altar. Okay? And, it, of course, it's let's go have an altar. Uh, you notice who's involved? It's that one guy, Reuben. <coughs> I mean, Reuben is the oldest, but it seems like in this Bible, Reuben, Reuben like, is the ringleader uh, of those who like to fall. That's him. He's the ringleader. Like, if there's, uh, remember, remember when they were in the desert and all of a sudden somebody said, well, why is Moses all the Why is he the boss? Well, we got God too. Well, Reuben here, he's, he should be the boss. We're from the tribe of Reuben, and all of a sudden, they start going against uh, the Lord, and, and somebody comes up with a censor, of course, and theirs is a better censor than Aaron's, although Aaron's is the one the Lord gave them. So the, the Lord says, hey, why don't you bring all your censors out here? I, I thought it was stupid. i got to tell you something. That's where I go like, well, there's some stupid people in the world. Aaron's in charge. Moses, they saw all these things. He says, hey, why don't you bring your censor? i got to tell you something. If Moses would have said that to me, I'd have been like, nope, don't got one. <laughs> Why? I ain't stupid. I seen what God did to Pharaoh, and I'm not having that happen to me. Right. Amen? Amen? So, <laughs> Korah, who was a Reubenite, they go back out there, and guess what happened? I mean, all the Reubenites, Dathan and not Babaya, uh, Dathan was there. And what happens? They all die. They all die. Why? Because... They thought they were better than what they were. I mean, look, we have these things, people. It's called uh, critical critical people. Why is he the preacher? Well, he's been there for a while. Why is he the guy? Well, if he wasn't, God would get rid of him. Do you realize that? If, if God would get rid of him, you know? Or you'd see it. I mean, if you're in a real Bible-believing church, and I, I, I've seen guys be like Saul. And they're very bitter. And you know what usually happens? They're usually preaching to his wife. I've done that a few times because I was a soul. Amen. I've had my out my time. I was not successful coming in. It took five years just to learn how to speak to people rightly. I thought everybody should be a soldier and I should tell them what to do. Why? Well, you gotta understand, people I had 25 years of that. 
in the end, I'm, the only person I'm talking to is my wife, and I'm, you know, my wife and two other people, and they were all women. I had, a, I, I learned how to be a pastor because no men would come into the church, and I had to pastor to women. I had other pastors telling me I shouldn't even pastor to women. I was like, why not? They're there. They're who shows up. And it was all women all the time that I had. I had like one, maybe one or two guys, and it was all women. And I still do that today. And, uh, but, you know, but yeah, you know, I look at things and I say, God was still, he was just teaching me a lot of things. And God's still teaching every one of us and every one of you. Amen. You're, you know when he's going to stop teaching you? When the rapture comes, you did. <laughs> and he's not stopping to teach us because we go in the millennium and guess what you're going to do when he gets to the millennium right. you're going to be te being taught again Amen. the whole time Amen. Amen. well uh, with this screwing up I, I just uh, just to um, just to show you some things of go back to Joshua chapter 15 Joshua 15 Just a few back. And in Joshua 15, looking at verse number 6. Now, watch this what happens. He says, And the border went up to Beth Hagla and passed along by the north of Beth Arabah. Okay, this is, and, now watch. And the border went up to the, look what it says, stone of who? Bohan, the son of Reuben. Okay, now go back to this in verse number 10. And he says, And when they came unto the borders of Jordan, that were in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, the half-tribe of Manasseh, built there an altar by Jordan, by Jordan, a great altar to see to. You think maybe that's the stone? That that's where it's at? I mean, they put a great stone there. And then all of a sudden... It's like they get there and there's a stone there for them to deal with. They probably put it up right there. Why? Well, you always look for your old landmarks. You always look for your things. You always look for those things, you know? And, and uh, never looking for God's things, okay? And, and, and look at verse number 11. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan. At the passage of the children of uh, Israel, okay? They're calling the congregation now. Come on on out. We got some things here. Um, and they start, we don't, you know, uh, I guess what they're saying is over on this side of Jordan, uh, we don't have a tabernacle, I guess, you know, so we're going to have to do something for ourselves here. Isn't that what they did when they split, the, when they split, when it split in half? Uh, two tribes in the, in the south and, and the rest of the ten up north. And you know what happens? They get up there and they start their own religion. They take one two calves, put one in Dan and one, 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 one in uh, uh, Gibeon or something like that. And what do they do? Bam, they start a new religion up. Like they're going to compete with God. And that's the worst part is they use his name. You ever seen that today? I mean, there's a religion out there that is, is, is people are going to hell left and right in it. Uh, my, 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 my father was this, my mother was this, so I'm going to die this. And they got a whole religion going, and they use Jesus' name, and they're sending people to hell. Yeah. Right down the street. They got a store in every block, people. That's not the right plan of salvation. Well, when you got saved, did you have to do tic-tac-toe three in a row? No, you don't do that. You have to take, a, to take Jesus into your body. You never took a piece of bread or a, or a, or a, a hooch. And put some liquor inside you to get it? How'd you get Jesus inside of you? You just believed on him. Amen? That's wrong. What is, what's happening is they're sending people to hell by the name of Jesus. It's that sick. And don't think they're the only ones. You got Jehovah Witnesses doing it. You got Church of Christ doing it. You got all kind you got the Protestants doing it today. And and you, you know, and, and the Mormons, they're all doing it. What's that? There's, these are the these are horrible people to me. Why? You're taking Jesus' name and sending people to hell through it. Yeah. You know what they got? They got another Jesus, but you got to understand something, people. Not everybody realizes that. Yeah. Right. 
You go after the weak-minded. You know, the, the delivery driver doesn't know who Main Street is. And now he's, he's, he gets tied up in those things. And you know why he does? Because he doesn't really, really know God. He just wants to get by on it. You don't think if you really want to know God, God's going to say, hey, wait a second, that's wrong. Let me ask you something. When you guys talk to people, and I mean Christians, and I know you do, you ever notice that you're talking to them, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you hear something out of their mouth, you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a God. Where'd they get that from? They got it from a man. That's where they got it from. They got it right from a man. And they just keep repeating it. just keeps getting repeated, repeated. Next thing you know, that comes a doctrine. you got people going to hell because of it. It's true, people. And that's what happens with this stuff. They start rearing up altars. We're rearing up altars. Hey, look. You say, well, we don't do that today. We do it all the time. I see it all the time. Watch how it says it. Okay? Uh, let's keep going. It says, verse number, uh, verse number 12. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. Okay, you remember Exodus 32? They did the same thing. They know this is wrong. The whole congregation knows it's wrong. Verse number 13, And the children of Israel sent unto children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, into the land of Gilead. They only they send, they send Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest. Uh, you know what? With him, ten princes of each chief house, a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel, and each one was an head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. So God said, uh, Joshua says, hey, what? Uh, let's, send, uh, let's send somebody there. Who are we going to send? Phinehas. You know what Joshua said? That's good, man. You remember this guy, Phinehas? Okay, in Numbers 25, you remember Numbers 25? Uh, there was a girl, a Midianite girl, and God said to them, he said, don't marry the Midianites after Balaam had told Balak, send your women over there and go uh, fornicate with, the, with Israel and get them to marry you. That way we can get them from inside to be cursed because God doesn't want them unequally yoked, okay? So uh, they go in there to see the Midianite girls. And, uh, and, and what happens is one of the guys takes a Midianite girl and brings her in a tent. And, and, and you know what they're doing in front of everybody? They're fooling around. They did it right in front of everybody. How do you know? Well, Phinehas, Phinehas the priest, he grabs a, a, a spear, a javelin, and he goes over and he kills both of them with a javelin with one stroke. Now, how can you do that? Yeah, together. You get it? That's... See, when you're mature, you can think of these things. When you're not mature, you can't think of these things. And when you're mature, you can handle these things. And when you're not mature, you can't handle these things. Do you understand what it is to be mature? Obviously. You see? And that's what, it, that's what happened with Phinehas. And Phinehas turns around and he stabs him right through while they're in the very act of it, doing it in front of people. And, and, and this is how bad it can get. That is how bad it can get. And the whole congregation... Was, was already, they know the, the, the ramifications of this. Now, verse 15. And they came unto the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh unto the land of Gilead, and they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that ye have committed against God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord? In that, watch the wording. God is very good with this wording to help you out. In that ye have built it, who an altar? You. Ye have built it, you, an, al an altar. That, now watch, that ye might rebel this day against God. Whose altar is it? It's their altar. Okay, he made sure he said it like that. You built you an altar, he said. You, how many altars are there? And where's that? It's in a tabernacle right now, right? Where's your altar? Well, it's right in front of you. You've got that book, okay? That is your altar. That You have a spiritual altar today, people. Uh, let me ask you something. You ever gone into churches and they say you, gotta come, uh, you want to come up to the altar? Yeah. What, are you, what are we dealing with? Oh, I know. I know what everybody says. I, I've, I've been at every revival. 
I've been at all those. I've been at all, not every revival, and I've been at revivals. I've been at these things. My wife and I, we've had, we've, we say right at the end that we all know it. That's where all the emphasis is. You come up to this altar. Hey, does anybody want to get saved? I've heard the salvation call. Why don't you come, come up to the altar? Oh, I didn't realize it was of works. Right. Do you want to get saved? Come up to the altar. We don't mean that. No, but you said it. You understand? God's hearing your words. Your words have changed over time. It's not just, why don't you come down and I'll teach you, or we'll take you in the next room. That's what we do. We go, go in the next room. I used to send Yovani to Deanna. Take them in there. Take them, talk to them. And then I grab, usually then I would grab somebody else, like somebody who's not used to it. You go with my wife and you go do it. Why? Because someday you're going to have to do it. Okay? And I send people over. Why? By themselves. This person not only needs to understand, they need to understand what they're getting saved from. Yeah. They need to understand who's saving them. Most of the time they're saved just when they're sitting, the, the message has already caught them. But you have to understand, they're emphasizing and emphasizing, come up and come up and come up, what, to an altar? So you can get right? Is that how it works? I, 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 please show me the Bible verse where it does. It doesn't work that way. Right. It's all where? These words are spirit. These words are life. Where's it all going? Where do you get where, where do you get where do you get right with God? Yeah. For with the heart a man believes on the righteousness. It's with the heart, people. Him being convicted in his heart. Well, what are these guys falling down from? Because their flesh can't hold them up anymore because the flesh is weak. And when that spirit, it, look, it works both ways, people. They went to sleep. Why? The flesh was weak. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. It's the same thing. Look at the other way. Okay? The flesh is still weak, but the spirit is not. You just have to push it a little bit, and you'll fall down. Why? Because the spirit wants to be with God, but this flesh makes you go to the ground. Amen. Amen. So he says, ye have built it you. It's your altar. Okay? Uh, verse number 17. You build it so you can rebel against God. Is, is, is the iniquity of Peor... Uh, too little for us, from which we are not cleansed un until this day, although there was a, a plague in the congregation of, of the Lord, but that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it will be seen, ye have rebelled today against the Lord, that tomorrow we will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. They're using, I mean, come on, people, using God's name to have an altar here, okay? Um, you do understand that some people will say, this isn't a big deal, but then they don't, then they read the Bible, and the Bible says something like a little leaven. Yeah. Leaven's the whole lump. You just put a little bit in, you leaven the whole lump. I mean, I see it all the time, people, like, uh, look at look at some of the things. Galatians said, if you add one thing, it's not salvation anymore. So now you've got people who go around telling people, well, you need to get baptized afterwards. Uh, you need to get saved, but now you need to get water baptized afterwards. Is that true? No. No, so what they'll say is, oh, well, that's okay because they got the first three. Believe me, they're not emphasizing the first three. Right. They're emphasizing that water, okay? Look, if water saves, you sing about it. I've heard the joyful cry that water saves. Sing it. I will tell you, that's exactly whenever I deal with the Church of Christ, anybody from the Church of Christ, as soon as we get to it, I, and they, they give me the plan of salvation, I always say, well, wait a second. You got the first. You have to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what they'll tell you. The second thing they say is you have to repent. And then the third is you have to get baptized in water. So what's the real thing that's saving you? Because if you did the first two and you didn't do the last one, you're not there, are you? So what's got to go on? It's that salvation is by the water. Sing about the water. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what can happen. A little leaven, it leavens the whole lump. He says, verse number uh, 19, Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of, of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us in building who? You. You an altar. Now watch what it says. This is how God, this is perfect how he writes this. 
Watch what it says. You an altar beside the what? Altar of you have a competing altar. You know how many times I've actually heard this preached? Do you know how I heard this preached? Uh, a guy got up and preached um, taking, uh, taking things, taking things, uh, thinking too fast and, and jumping on things before you need to. You know, on this. Getting, getting, uh, getting upset before you have to. You know, don't jump to conclusions too fast. That's what they'll do when they'll preach this, this, this chapter. Look, I don't care what it is. Don't rear up an altar. I, they, in the end, anybody can say anything. Hey, look, it's one of, I got an, I got a picture. I got a statue out here of Jesus. There's a statue there. You know what it is when you look at it. You know what they're trying to do. You go down the road. They got one there. So you turn around. And you say, Hey, what's the people there? What are you lighting candles for that woman for? Hey, what are you doing over there, kissing those statues and stuff like that? Oh, no, 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 we're not kissing the statue. Oh, I'm sorry, so you kiss the statue. I guess I was stupid. And then the next thing out of their mouth is, we're doing it to what it represents. Oh, is that what the uh, savage on Gilligan's Island was doing too in front of this totem pole? Because I saw that too. He bows down too, but you call him an idolater. Now, let me ask you another question. If somebody comes in from deep, darkest Africa, never, never seen any of this stuff before, walks in, and he sees you kissing the statue, lighting candles to the statue, getting down before the statue, is he not going to say, that's your God? Yeah, right? Yes. What's different between him and you? Yeah. He does the same thing in Africa. He does the same thing in Hindu, in Hindu India or wherever. He does the same exact thing. It's what the, he, he looks at and he says, hey, what's the difference between them and us? I guess I can do this one too. I'll be here next week. I can bow down to all your statues too. And you know what the thing is? He'd be accepted in that place. And he wouldn't even know Jesus Christ. But he could be accepted right in there. It's called idolatry, people. And it's coming into our churches too. And that's what we got to keep out. I don't have a problem with somebody coming down. Don't be afraid to come down. But make sure you understand what it is. You're not coming down here to worship a piece of wood. You're just coming down to pray. Right. That's all you're doing. If you want to sit there, go ahead and sit there and pray. I'm not going to call you out and bring you down. Why? That's stupid. Yeah. I wasn't up here to do that. You know, when a, when a preacher is calling you out from out there and he's trying to get you up here or something like that, you realize he's trying. Now think about this. Please, this is, whew, this is weird stuff. Deanna, please come up here for a second. Come here. <laughs> now, I know you got a dress on, so you don't have to do it, but just just bow down there like you're praying. Okay, now, where's the preacher? Who's she bowing to? He's getting a good amount of authority, isn't he? Nobody ever thinks of that. There's the preacher standing up, and the, and the people are coming. You can go down, sit, sit down. Don't 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 talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you see what's going on here? He is he's the. If you ever notice, it's there's always these certain preachers who keep pushing that altar and pushing that altar and pushing that altar. And where are they standing? Yeah, they're at the top. They're preaching from here as people are. They, and they even stand there and they even look down and stuff like that, talk to other people uh, with other groups as the songs are going. This is crazy, people. People don't, you can't see it? I bet you every one of you see it right now. You saw it. And, and we've done it. We've been involved in it. Look, after a while, you get to realize what God really wanted in his church. He wanted a spiritual church. Not a physical, not a, not everything physical. Right. And we've kind of thrown it to the side. Why? Well, because we got good places and lush places, and and God's gave, made us wealthy. And once you get wealthy, you start to worship, and you start to get involved with what your own money. And that's what happened to us. We are definite Laodicean Christians. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We put your, you built you an altar. And you, you know what you did? You put it beside the Lord's altar. 
You put it beside the Lord. You're, you're, you're using God's name at the altar, I bet you. There's a thing here. It's what? Your altar versus God altar, God's altar. Which one do you care about more? I care about God's. That's why I ain't playing that game. I, I, I haven't gone. I'm, I've, I've been staying away from meetings. And the reason why is because that always leads to something else. And I went to a preacher's meeting just a little while ago. And you know what happened? Every one of the... There was three preachers. Two of the preachers, one preacher got up, he just preached the message, he was done, it was a good message. Next preacher got up and he wanted, He got up there and you know what he did? He, he talked about the Hebrew the whole time. And then another guy got up and he talked about, you know what they said? If you never went to Jerusalem, your, 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 your uh, ministry uh, might not be complete because his was complete when he went to Jerusalem. And he asked me if I wanted to go and I said, no, why would I want to go there? <laughs> God's not there. And he said, what do you mean? I said, Jesus walked out and he said, your house is left desolate unto you. And then they came in in 70 AD. And what did they do, Bob? Destroyed it. Everything gone. And when he comes back in, it's going to get built up and I'm going to be right there. I get to see this stuff. Why? Because I get the right guy. Yeah, amen. And, and I want the right guy in there. I could care less about Netanyahu and all those others, man. And Man uh, Bacon and all of them. They don't bother. They, they're nothing to me. I care about Jesus Christ. It's his land. And when he gets back in there, I want to be stand, I want to be right there watching this whole thing. Why? Because that's been mentioned in the Bible over 300 times, and I want to see it. And I will see it. Every eye is going to see it. And he'll take those steps. When he comes into that land and he starts to walk up to that temple, man, he's going to walk up and he takes his step and he can take his good old time too and walk up there. And then I can see him walking up. And for some reason, now all of a sudden, that, 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 uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant, it's back. It's there now. Amen. It just, it's there. Amen. And he comes walking up. And, it, and it's only like, you know, so big and so tall like this. And he comes over and he, he looks and, and then he turns around and he, he, he puts one hand on one cherubim. He puts the other hand on the other cherubim. And he sits down right there on that little box. And everybody goes, I thought he'd have a big throne. And he turns around and he says, it's the small things. See, you were looking for big things and not realizing that God's throne on earth is a little box that big. And he can hold all power from that little box Amen. that he's sitting on. Yeah. And when he sits down, do you know what everybody's going to say? Absolutely nothing. Because every voice will be stopped right. at that moment. You have nothing to say because he is worthy to yes. sit on that throne and he deserves it, and it's his. Yes, amen. And the only thing we can say is, just go like this. It's the great day when he shall come in his, his glory and sit on his throne. Right. And the throne of his glory. Amen. There's a real altar. Verse 20 and the last verse. Now watch, watch how they compare this. They said, did not Achan, remember him? Remember Achan, the idiot. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, uh, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? And wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. He took his family with him, you know. you got to understand something. Iniquity, it passes on. Iniquity passes on. Your sins actually pass on to your children sometimes. Uh, the sins of the father can, you, you're not going to get, your son shouldn't get punished for it, but usually it, it goes down. Uh, I bet you Rod's two boys, I bet you they act just like him sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to straighten up, man. Hard <laughs> <laughs> on the all that good. <laughs> Amen. So this guy Aiken. Many died because of this. I mean, for him doing this Babylonian garment, many people have died because of that accursed thing that he took. And he thought it was going to be nothing. But guess what? It, it, it can cause a lot. I, I've, I've, made, I've made mistakes, and I've, I've sat there going, oh, no, my family. And after I've done them, I'm just sitting there going, oh, no, I, I can't take this back. I can't take it back. It's a hard deal, isn't it? What does that mean? You should, that's why you need to be in touch with the Lord. Should I make if any big decision, don't make them fast. And don't ask stupid people what to decide. 
Go to the Lord first. Ask, yeah. him, ask him first. Ask him first. See if he sends somebody your way. Don't go around asking. Just ask him. Let him let somebody come your way. What I've usually found out is when I've asked the Lord, he sends somebody and somebody starts talking about it without me even thinking about it. I'm just like, okay, keep going with that. And he'll say it. I'm like, all right. I don't even tell him or nothing. And I go home and I say, I think the Lord's telling me this. And then I throw out some or a fleece or something. And I'm like, bam, the Lord's answered me. I always answer, I try to get yes or no answers. Why? Because the you and the thumb. Ask God simple answers. Don't ask him too hard answers because now you're asking for paragraphs. You know how hard it is to find a paragraph? But it's sure easy to find yes and no, isn't it? Be simple concerning things. Why? Wasn't Jesus simple? Amen. You see the answers he gives? Right. Very simple, very easy, very concise with things. You don't see him talking about elaborate science or something. He comes down to the easiest level. Why? Because look who he's talking to. A bunch of dummies like us. And he has to communicate with us. And it's tough sometimes because we got these heads that are, I mean, I swear, I, I, God, the hardest bone on your body is your, is your forehead. You know why? I don't know. But I can tell you this, it sure is, isn't it? Because nothing wants to penetrate. Amen. So uh, that's what we got. Next week we'll get into the rest and what happened. The response to this thing is what we'll get in after this. Remember, it was Reuben, and if you look at the last verse, they called the uh, they called this altar Ed. Ed, isn't that great? Ed. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you. We uh, thank you, Lord, for for uh, the good teaching, Lord Father. We'll get part two next week. Thank you, Lord, for talking to us. Thank you, Lord. Everybody in here got woken up, Lord Father, to something. We want to thank you for it, Lord God. I ask you, Lord, and say, uh, Lord, help us from it, and help help those that we deal with from it, Lord Father. We're not going to pick on them. We just, we just like to see it not happen. We thank you in all you do, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we got a lot of people on, it looks like. Well, Maggie's on. Hey, Maggie. I know Marilyn's on. And Roxanne is on. Say hi to Roseanne. She's mad. She'd be mad at me or something. All right. Who else I got? Nobody.